Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. I'm Ann Harder. Welcome to Central Texas Living, the podcast. For more than 50 years, people seeking help for addictions have found that help at the nonprofit Cinecor Foundation. And so often, taking that first step toward help and sobriety is the most difficult. Joining me now, Christine Cohen, who is chairperson of the upcoming Boots, Buckles, and Bling fundraiser for Cinecor, as well as Lindsay Smith, who is Senior Manager and at Senecor and Senecor's Facility Director, Stacy Woodall. So we have three lovely ladies. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having us. In the studio. So happy to have you here because I love talking about help that's available to people who struggle. And uh, sometimes people don't know they're struggling, but other times they hit that rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, so I would... First, want to start with uh, with you, uh, Christine, about your story and why you're involved in an in an effort to raise money for substance abuse help. Absolutely, um, I have had the gift of sobriety since March 14, 2012. Um, I am an alcoholic, and and um, I, I wear that badge um, with the grace of God. Um, the, it, alcohol almost killed me. I mean, it was, I almost killed me. Let's, let's Mm -hmm. say, say what, how that is. But, um, alcohol, it, it, um, it almost, it almost killed me. And so Cinecor, Stacy and I have been friends for a number of years and Cinecor was not in place when I went to treatment. My family, um, encouraged me with an intervention they did do uh, an intervention oh <laughs> boy <laughs> oh boy yeah. this was an intervention that said you are completely out of our lives you're we're you're done you oh. you you will not have um relationships with us or our children or we're just we're done we cannot watch you kill yourself anymore it's so hard on family members yeah, and you know what and i gotta tell you you know when you're when you're in the disease um, I just, I still remember being so offended at, at, at because it was, I was only hurting myself, right? It you was, I was well, of, well, of course, but you know, perception being reality, I, 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 that's how bad the disease is, is that families, families suffer in, in the, in the addict, um, whether it be drugs or alcohol or, you know, uh, Cinecor treats, um, an array of things, but, um, the family's just lost, they're just lost and, and everyone ends up broken. And so when I went to treatment in 2011, Cinecor was not in Waco. Um, and my daughter, you know, was able to find a, a, a place that I could go to um, medically detox because I don't know if you know this, but alcohol is the only drug you can die from the withdrawal. Other drugs you want to die, but alcohol can kill you. Um, you know, I, I remember them having to, you know, um, give me sips of alcohol just to keep me from seizing, you know, before I got into treatment. I mean, that's, that's how bad it can get. And, um, believe it or not, I didn't think, I <laughs> still didn't think I was an alcoholic when I went down there. Yeah. The disease is, is crazy. And, and the fact that there's a place right here in Waco that, um, 
that people just don't know about, you know, the stigma of addiction. You know, I'm, you know, a lot of people ask me why I'm so, I'm so open about it. Yeah, I had no um, idea until I saw oh, it on your I, Facebook. You know what, you know what, I, if you, if you're around me more than three or four minutes when you, when you meet me, there's a, there's somehow that I find a way to tell to people. To tell your story. But it's, it's amazing because when I show you who I am, you're not afraid to show me who you are. And so that, that honesty is, is, um, and the number of people that I've had, um, pull me aside and, you know, say my, my sister is going through this, what would you suggest? Or, you know, I've, I've been, could I possibly be an addict or, you know, it's all about paying it forward. But, um, so anyway, my passion for, for recovery and Cinecore is right here and they're, they're saving lives. They are saving lives. And so I want to be a part of that. Mm, Stacy, tell me your story. Uh, how long have you been involved with the Cinecore? What brought you to this kind of work? So I have my own story uh, with addiction, and I, uh, once I got sober, I decided I wanted to go into the field of counseling, and so uh, for years, I thought that would be um, as a therapist, and then I started looking more into the chemical dependency side of counseling, and so that's really what uh, brought me into the field, and again, when I started at Freeman Center, that was all that was here. Right. So I started volunteering with them, and I, I didn't know then, but Cinecor was in the process of, uh, you know, coming in and rescuing Freeman Center. Um, so that was the genesis of it, that it was, it kind of absorbed yeah. what the Freeman mm-hmm. Center was yeah, doing? Yeah, it did. Okay. I did then, not know that. Yeah. yeah. And so, and yes, and, and what we did was we sold the older homes, mm-hmm. Cinecor sold the older homes. Right. And then we... Uh, took the new facility, well, it wasn't new, but that facility on 3015 Herring, and we uh, just totally redid the whole thing. It had been a nursing home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it so was a nursing home. So it was sort of medical yeah, facility, sort of, was. which mm-hmm. kind of helped, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, because now we really gutted it, though, I'm going to yeah. say that. But, like, the nurses area, all you know, all that stayed the same. So um, I went to work for them and as a counselor, and uh, I've been there 10 years, mm-hmm. and so I've just, you know— um, my role has changed and evolved, and yeah, and so over time. You, so you you're over several different facilities. Uh, I actually have oversight for Waco, Texas, and Tyler, Texas. Okay, good. So, how many communities have Cinecor Foundation uh, centers? We have here Tyler, Austin, Amarillo, Corpus Christi, um, Houston, and. Um, bunch of yeah bunch of them and we're fixing to open one in new mexico new mexico mm-hmm. okay well since uh, you have chimed in <laughs> Lindsay, <laughs> let, tell me that as as a um, senior manager what what is your role at cinecore um i'm got my hands in a little bit of everything i do the operations i'm over the cooking staff um i work with the clinical i'm also an lcdc um so I just make sure that the clients have what they need, um, that the movement of the clients uh, where they're supposed to be, they're on time. I just make sure everything's cohesively working. I got my hands in a little bit of everything in the facility. Mm, what And what led you to this kind of work? Well, I have my own story. <laughs> um, I had was in active addiction for 10 years. Really? Um, next month I'll have 15 months. 15 years sober. Um, so once I decided to get clean, um, I found that a lot of people were coming to me as like Christine is, and they were asking for advice and just mm-hmm. somebody to talk to. And I was repeatedly told, um, you'd make a good counselor. So that's what I went to school for. And um, that's why I'm at Santa Cor. I've been well, there five years. And, and because you know where they are. You have walked the walk and you know the kinds of things that someone is feeling that is in the early stage of, of realizing they need help. You know, it's my understanding you, there are just three things that can happen. Jail, death, or you Inst- get sober. Yeah, or institutional. Yeah, institutional, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, so what kinds of help are available at Cinequa? I mean, we've kind of talked about the residential. So how many people can be there? So we have a 56 bed facility wow. and we have a, a full medical detox with a medical team there. So we can safely detox anyone from any substance. Uh, we have a step down from there to a residential program, which can be anywhere from 28 
to 90 days, mm-hmm. depending. Uh, and it depends on the pay source. Um, we Then we have a supportive program that they can step down from residential into, and that's where they literally live at the facility, but they go out and start looking for work. Mm. And they're still getting that support of the groups in the evenings and things like that. And then we also have a sober living house mm-hmm. here, a men's sober living house, which Lindsay uh, is runs that for us. Um, and so we've got different, multiple levels. We also just started two years ago, uh, we have medicated assisted treatment. So we also are able to treat those that have insurance that want to uh, still work but need to detox off opiates. Mm. So they can come to us to get medicated and then from there go to work. And then we enroll them in our outpatient program because you you just you don't want to get the one piece without getting the counseling piece of it. Absolutely. Well, you know, you mentioned Medicaid. The cost of this kind of treatment can be exorbitant. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can, can be ruinous to families. And, and sadly, often someone goes to rehab, goes to treatment, and, you know, they end up going to treatment again or the, and again. And if you're talking, you know, thousands of dollars, families can't afford that as much as they want to help their that's loved exactly one. Right. Mm-hmm. So so that's why fundraisers are important. Yes. So and and so how does Cinecor do that, provide that as a nonprofit? Just whoever wants to address that. Well so we one thing we we do take all major insurances mm-hmm. and private pay. And we do have a few state funded beds, but what we do the fundraising for is for overall operations, but it also helps with those that come in that have unbelievable deductibles. Um, right. You know, and we're able to step in and help with those. Yeah, m- money shouldn't be a hindrance to someone getting help because this will save their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it shouldn't be, but it is. It is. And it's changed. You know, years ago, it wasn't. The cost wasn't. The cost was, but insurance companies paid so much more, and, and now they just, they don't. Yeah. Well, because it is very, it's very, very expensive. Well, and also... um Recently, they they just added a beautiful outdoor area. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! Which is I see that, and from s- someone who was in treatment, um, where I went, they did not have an outdoor. I mean, you could walk outside, but you just kind of stood there and then had to go back into the clinical. Just you know, it, it was it was difficult. But they have created a beautiful. Um, There's supposed to be a ribbon cutting sometime soon. Has that been scheduled? No, it hasn't been scheduled just because we, with COVID, we've back order, back order a lot of things, but uh, we got, we are getting to put that outside area out there because we got a grant from Cooper Foundation. Good, yeah. And then, of course, then Accord put money in there with it. But it's, Lindsay has been my primary, (laughs) she's been my primary person over uh, getting that all set up, but it's going to be an amazing, we've got a volleyball court. We have stationary exercise equipment stations for them, a walking track, horseshoe. Gardening area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So physical exercise is certainly a a part of treatment. Well, and yeah, being able to go outside and just feel normal for just a little while. What I will give Stacy especially and Lindsay is that when you go to the facility, which um, people can schedule if they want to come and take a tour, it's, it's not, um, it's not super clinical she's you know she's hung things on the wall she's used coloring to to try to make it as um what's the term just yeah Yeah, i mean just yeah Yeah. to where it's not a hospital type (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know um because it's it's hard to be in treatment it's you know when you're facing your demons and and um to have a facility like these guys have created over there is just it's just invaluable Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. So how long has it been in place in Waco, Cinecor Foundation? So the inpatient opened in July of 2012. Okay. Um, and then, of course, our outpatient is, again, because we absorbed Freeman Center, so the outpatient stayed open. We That never shut down. Uh, 
So, so it's a continuum for, for free free mass. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a fundraiser. We keep re- referencing yeah. it. It is going to be on September 17th mm-hmm. at the Baylor Club. We will be at the Baylor Club. Very, yeah. very excited about it. I get to be there, do some emceeing. But tell me about this. How many years have you done Boots, Buckles, and Bling? Our third. The Te- third. Technically, this is the third. <laughs> La- the first one went off, and then last year we had everything in place. And three days before, um, three days before the event, um, the mayor shut down the oh. the you know venues and such. So we had to cancel. So we did com- continue with the online auction. Yes, which you know they were, were able, able to, to make some, some money, money mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so you know we just were able to carry over some of the stuff into um, into this year. The venue sold, so we had to find yeah. a new place. And the Baylor Club was gracious enough to take us in. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, we're excited. But but you know what? I, I believe everything happens for a reason, and, and God's in control. And, and this year, it's just going to be so special. We were able to secure Randy Grimes. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. tell me about Randy Grimes. Randy Grimes. Um, he he was a uh, graduate of Baylor University mm-hmm. um, and went on to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, of course, had, you know, was just beat the heck out of his body. And with injury after injury comes painkillers. And um, mm. it, it got to a point where the painkillers overtook him. And he played for Tampa for 10 years. And there, you know, he admits that there were times he went on the field and doesn't remember anything about the game, you know. So, oh, yeah, it hands fulls of hands fulls of pills. Um, he married his um, his uh, college sweetheart. They are still married by the, I think, by the grace of God. He, uh, she survived him. Um, but, but he, you know, he's just out there. He went on to, he, he got into recovery and went on to start a foundation athletes in recovery. And he, he just flew to, um, to a location in Texas this past weekend to do an intervention and, and encourage other, you know, another athlete to get into recovery. And he's just, he's walking the walk and talking the talk. And so he's going to come tell us about his story. And, you know, um, I'm just, I'm so excited to hear from him. Yeah, he's a, he seems like he's just a great guy. And it's going to be fun, though. There's a yes. band? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Gary Kyle Band. Yes, that We had them scheduled for last year, and they uh-huh. were gracious enough again to put yeah. us on the schedule. But, yeah. Lindsay and where are they from? Tell them. me about them. They're here local. You're the local? Okay, here. good. And they played the first year. Yeah, they played the first oh, year good, for us. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So it's definitely got a country flavor. It does. And it folks does. get to really, you know, gussy up. As yep. they say, Those boots, buckles, and bling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've got Deanna Putnam with Prim and Wim Design. She's doing mm-hmm. our decorating, and she's going to convert the Baylor Club into a honky tonk. <laughs> All right, into a honky tonk location. For very good. This yeah, very good. All right. So, uh, how many tables will you be able to sell? And what's how's that going? We have thirty tables to to fill, and I believe to date we have fifteen of those spoken for. So okay. we need we need butts and seats. Absolutely, and you know, mm-hmm. table sponsorship. Um, you know, we'll we'll be able to um, highlight businesses that are you know agree to to support a table and sponsor a table. Um, but yeah, we we just want it. We want it. And like I told Stacy and Lindsay, my my goal this year was to to continue to just get the word out about Cinecor. That is that is the number one goal is that people know that Cinecor is here because everybody knows someone who has suffered from this disease. It touches so many Absolutely. families. So and, many. Yeah. And so Cinecor, speaking of which, do they also offer help for family members? We have family counseling as well. Yeah. So when you're in treatment, um, our clinicians are able to set up family counseling with you if they want to come in and do family sessions. Well, like you said, Christine, your your family just finally said, we've got to be drastic with this young lady. We got to be drastic with you. Well, and I've got to tell you, and, and Al, Al-Anon, I mean, was mm-hmm. at least for my husband, you know, Al-Anon, um, I, I know it saved his sanity um, where he was able to go and, and be with people that, that knew exactly what he was going through. Mm-hmm. And you then know? Alateen is also exactly. available. Oh, there's programs, yes. you know, it, it there's just something to be said about sitting in a room with people that just know exactly how you feel. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're in that kind of setting, 
it's it's all confidential. Right. Nobody talks about who was there. Exactly. So exactly. But the stigma is left at the door, mm-hmm. you know, and, oh, and yeah. they're able to, yeah. to talk, which which is why, you know, even, uh, you know, nine and a half years sober, you know, I still attend AA meetings Do at you least really? tw- oh, twice a week. And I will. I get to until the day I die. You know, I get to go into a room of people just like me that that faced, you know, in I know it sounds dramatic, but f- face Satan and, and and God saw fit to save us. And, and we, you know, we use the analogy, we're the survivors of the same shipwreck. You know, when, when you can look at someone in the eyes and go, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah. And there is hope, you know, I'll crawl in that hole with you and tell you how I got out. You know, instead of standing up atop the hole going, you need to get out of there. It's not good for you. You know, quit doing this to your family. Mm-hmm. And um, but, yeah, those programs are in in Cinecore will guide. You know, So people. obviously the 12 step program is a is an important thing. It's my life for you. But are there also other medical kinds of interventions? You, you hear some say, oh, 12 step. Eh, we're, what we do over here is. Well, this so, and, you know, <clears throat> it will work for you. You know, I don't know you hear those ads on yeah. radio. <laughs> well, so, I mean, we have uh, local 12-step groups that come in, in mm-hmm. AA, NA, we have Celebrate Recovery. There, there's actually there are a lot. so yeah. many more in Waco mm-hmm. than there used to be right. uh, 10 and years ago. And it's just like you say, it's so important to have people that know what you're going mm-hmm. through. Right. But, but one thing about Senecor, um Everybody's recovery looks different. Sure. Um, and what works for that person. So we individualize their treatment plan and what's going to work with much. them. Right. And it, and as you say, it may involve, you know, medications. It may invo- involve other yes. kinds of chemical mm-hmm. help. Right. And, it, and, lem- and when they're in treatment, let me say this, it's you're getting uh, intensive process group, you're getting intensive individual treatment, and you're getting education groups on all that. But all of our programming is not just 12-step based, but we tie that into it too. Because we, we want we want the client, again, as an individual to be able to decide what works best for them. And we want to show them that regardless of how that looks, we're going to support them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you also have to look at it at a at a program like AA that has been around almost a hundred years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the story behind that There's, is so yeah, it's it's amazing. Wh- amazing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bill W. Doctor Bob. Yeah, mm-hmm. the fact that it's it it's it's a miracle, quite frankly, that you know, nineteen um, twenties um, these two individuals put together a program that saved my life. Yeah in 2012 you know so i i don't know of course i'm a i'm a 12 step um yeah i i believe in that with everything i have but i also know that there's other routes that people can take Mm -hmm. just like Lindsay said each person's going to look different Mm -hmm. well and then through something like cinecore foundation you got the experts there that know how to help yeah and you got the medical personnel and and the time then and the and the beds of facility for people to be able to come in and 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 get that life saving. Well, I got to tell you too. Um, one of the hu- huge things that happened this past quarter is they're now serving veterans. Right. I think I saw that it's on amazing. the Facebook page or on the website that it yeah. is supported by the veterans. There are so many pe- former military yeah. people who struggle. And there, yeah, at the VA, there's a two and a half year wait. Yeah. For veterans to get in for substance abuse treatment. They're literally dying to get in, and Cinecor now. I mean, after a lot of a lot of work, is able to. Yeah, we started. <clears throat> we take Tri West now, but we're we're also actually uh, getting ready to start uh, taking in homeless veterans too. Mm-hmm. So, mm. so last quarter you treated fifty three was last I saw, last report I saw, or at least last quarter fifty six fifty six. But was it fifty six? Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's so encouraging. I mean, that that's real. That is good news. That's good news. Um, so again, Boots, Buckles and Bling, the fundraiser is going to be September 17th. And how can folks buy tickets? How can they get tickets? Um, BootsBucklesBling.com. You can get all the information um, that you need. You can call the local Cinecore if, mm-hmm. if that's, you know, e- mm-hmm. easier to, to get information. There's a Facebook page event. If you search bo- Boots, Buckles and Bling, um, we'll we'll get you there <laughs> very yeah, good for sure well and i hope to see everybody there for sure and i'm i'm looking forward to hearing randy's um 
testimony mm-hmm. about about how his life was saved and what he's doing now. I like to end these visits, though, with a questionnaire similar to the one the late, great James Lipton used on Inside the Actor Studio. And so we're just going to go around the room and ask you individual questions. We'll start with Stacy. Stacy, what is your favorite word? Peace. Mm. Yeah. For someone who has struggled with yeah addiction peace. addiction yeah because that's what you're looking for i guess yeah or contentment mm-hmm. but <clears throat> yeah okay so we will um i'm not we'll ask you what is your least favorite word christine addiction yeah mm-hmm. and yeah favorite would be hope yeah because with yeah without 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 hope we die I'm going to ask uh, this of Lindsay. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Helping others. That's a huge part of my life. Yeah, because you've been on the receiving end, huh? Somebody was there for me, saved my life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Stacey, what turns you off creatively or emotionally or spiritually? Just the I can't thought, just the that is. Mm Mm-hmm. I hear that it's, so yeah. many times from people. I can't do or I can't, you know, I can't make it. And, and that that does. That giving up. Yeah. Giving up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Christine, what sound do you love the most? Mm, baby's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Rick and I were just talking about, excuse me, we were just talking about that the other day. That is just music to my soul. Just I can listen to like cat, Giggle. instead of cat videos, baby's laughing. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. When they get tickled, I mean, and you just can't help it. Of course, them. you know as well as I do grandbabies, and that's just music to our ears. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So then what is your least favorite sound, Lindsay? My least favorite rooster. Sound. <laughs> so, <random. laughs> so does that translate to an alarm clock or, or an actual you, uh, you live near there's an gotta actual be a rooster. story behind that both <laughs> um before i moved to texas i lived in nebraska for 10 years so um there was plenty of roosters there and then for many years um i woke up to a rooster alarm clock not by my choice oh. but I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> okay, Stacey, what other profession would you have liked to have tried? Well, I've actually had more than one profession. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my first one was teaching. Mm. Uh, and I enjoyed that. But uh, probably most people that know me say that I should have done some type of uh, interior decorating. Yes, very mm. much so. Yeah, well, you mentioned the colors. You should mm-hmm. make, mm-hmm. make it a home-like atmosphere yes. there at Cinecor. Um, Okay, Christine, what job do you know you would not want to do? Oh, man. I wouldn't want to be a cop, a police officer. Yeah. I hold them in such high regard but and pray, pray, pray for them daily. But, boy, howdy, that would be a hard, hard job. Seeing human nature... Mm-hmm daily and having to having to maintain your composure and be nice and that's just they're they're just saints every one of them and how often they they're dealing with oh, people that are dealing with it exactly exactly oh mm-hmm. yeah there there may be sometimes the first mm-hmm. no yes. line of defense the first contact first mm-hmm. contact oh mm-hmm. my goodness yeah absolutely okay mm-hmm. i'm gonna ask each of you this then what do you want to hear god say when you arrive at the pearly gates we'll start with Lindsay. welcome i've been waiting for you Okay, Stacy. You did well. Mm-hmm. Christine. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying. You cheated well, I, well it, it, I did. I did. You just don't even have a clue. But but yeah, I mean, I I didn't get. To, I didn't know God at all until March 14, 2012, really? and now. Um, I can't imagine my life without that relationship. So oh. I'm, I'm late to the party a lot, but I get there. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> well, that, that makes me want to cry. I mean, that, that really is moving to mm-hmm. me to, to hear that. He saved me that day. Lindsay Cohen, thank you so much. The chairperson of Boots, Buckles, and Bling mm-hmm. again will be at the Baylor Club on September 17th. That's exactly right. We hope to see you there. 6 p.m. Hope to see you there. And, of course, to the uh, two fine ladies who work there at Cinecore uh, Foundation, the facility director, Stacey Woodall, and uh, Lindsay Smith, who's the senior manager. Thank you both. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All three of you. It's been fun. God bless you. you.
Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. about Waco. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here? I'm here to be your tour guide through Waco. I'm here to tell you all the goings on in and around Waco. I'm going to give you the 411 on what's happening, what's going on, and what events you should go to. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. Are you building a new business while managing a family? Are you tired of trying to balance home and work and everything seems to be coming up short? Then there's a podcast made just for you. Baking Your Business from Scratch is where we create the perfect recipe for building a successful business while managing your home and family with love. Come join us and see for yourself. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.